Um, so we're back, round two, dun dun dun. So I was really thankful to everyone that watched that first video I put up um, and also offered criticism because that was kind of the main thing I wanted. I, it was pointed out to me that if I said I wanted to do book related content post COVID, maybe I should practice by doing book related content now. And so as well as also making an Instagram account just for book stuff, feel free to follow that. I'll put links somewhere. I also thought now would be a good time, especially since we're inside and as we speak, uh, as I'm filming, it is day two of the reading rush. I thought I would do the reading rush stay home tag. So that's fun. <laughs> I'm a big reader. I love them. Them being books. So this just seems like a good way to like dip, dip our toe in to the world that is booktube. Oh. So something else I'm trying out in this video is going to be graphics. I don't have good editing software or one of those handwritten tablet things. So let's get on with the first question. How is your reading going while staying home? You're welcome. Believe it or not, I did not study graphic design. Honestly, my reading has been garbage. It's been so hard to concentrate. I have not been able to focus really on anything uh, for longer than maybe 20 minutes, which is why things like Animal Crossing have been my saving grace. Um, I made myself a TBR of like, all of these that I thought I was gonna read. I've read one of them. <laughs> I did start reading that one, Chimamanda, but um, I didn't like it, so I gave up on it. It's only really been since I started the reading rush that I actually have got back into the flow a bit more. I've made time in the day for reading, or that has been like my big, what are you doing today? I'm reading. So that's been nice to have that back. Like when you sort of lose uh, contact with a, a dear friend for a very long time, I was like, where are you? Where are you need to read? <laughs> Question two, where have you been reading at home? The main place I've been reading at home has been on my sofa. Um, especially when I was the only one in the flat, I was very much making the living room my bedroom. And then also on the balcony. I don't know if you can see there, but definitely here. There was one day this week that was beautifully sunny. I was out there for about four hours and now I'm sunburned. <laughs> it's just as well it's grey because yesterday I had to put on Factor 50 in the middle of April. It was humiliating. Question three. Best book you've read during isolation? Pre-reading rush, the only two books I'd read during isolation were Drive Your Plough Over the Bones of the Dead and uh, Norwegian Wood, and I preferred Norwegian Wood. I had started this before Isolation as well. The premise is really cool. The character development, um, the character building, sorry, is really cool. Like, I was very interested in this loner, animal-loving, astrology-wielding uh, crazy lady. <laughs> um, but as a, I just could, I really wanted to love it and I didn't. So out of the two, Norwegian would end up being my favorite, but even that I wasn't really sold on. However, as I say, it's Reading Rush. And the first book I read for that, which I'm, if you follow me on Instagram, you already know about. If you don't, then I'm not gonna talk about it because one of the questions is about the Reading Rush TBR. Um, that has been my favorite book. I've reread it during Reading Rush, so it's a little bit cheating, but oh my god, it's so much fun. It made me so happy. Question four, what's your favorite feel good book? Honestly, I think, again, the first book I read for the Reading Rush is my favorite feel good book. Other than that, I think, I haven't got them with me because I've lent like 15 books out, 15 of my favorite books out to friends before we went into lockdown. I think, um, if Cats Disappeared from the World was a really good book. Maybe The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, just because that's one of my favourite books of all time. It, I never get bored of reading it, it's so much fun. And I just think it deserves all the hype that Daisy Jones got. Don't shoot me, please. <laughs> Question five. Book you wish you could buy or borrow from the library? Now, I've been a bit naughty. Even though I'm furloughed and I'm not making anywhere near as much money as I should be because my contracted hours do not reflect the hours I actually tend to work. Whoops. 
I have actually found this website called hive.co.uk. I bought a book from there and then designated the sale of the book to one of my favourite bookstores in York called The Little Apple Bookshop. So I have been buying books in lockdown, which is very naughty. I just got so excited at the idea of being able to support a place that I love and also not supporting Amazon very actively in the process. I was kind of doing it a bit as a defiance of that. And the book I picked up was uh, My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Mosh... Mosh... Bay? It's just so gaudy and pink and brilliant. And the idea of this um, girl essentially becoming a hermit when we're all trapped inside our houses just seems like prime reading time. I'm very excited for that. Question six. Author you want to shout out during this time? I'm going to shout out my favourite author, potentially of all time at the moment, which is Madeline Miller, because she's amazing. She's only done two books. Uh, both of them are... I have a separate stack of books that I keep in my room next to my bed that I call my favourites of all time and both of her books are on that stack but she is brilliant, she's amazing and also she is very excited at the moment because her paperback of Circe is coming out. I am confused because I own a paperback of Circe, I'm assuming it's like a stateside thing rather than in the UK but she's very excited for that and the idea that potentially Americans or people that aren't in the UK aren't going to be buying the paperback because they're not going into stores and they're not seeing it makes me really sad because that book was brilliant. I, oh my god, by the end of it I wanted to live on an island with a lion and have sailors show up and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna divulge what she does to the sailors but it's awesome, very badass lady. And then finally, what is your Reading Rush TBR? For those of you that don't follow the Reading Rush in any way, there are four challenges for the books that you're going to be reading during this four day period. It started on April 16th and it ends April 20th. I'm filming this on April 18th. Who knows when this video is actually going to be uploaded. So at the moment I am halfway through book two of my TBR, but the first book that I read was a book that makes you happy. And this is the one I alluded to so aggressively in um, my feel good books, the best book I read so far in lockdown, and that is Ernest Cline's Ready Player One. It, it was so good every single time I read it. And it's one of those books that I, after I finished reading it this time around, I was like, I can't wait for them to make a film of it. And then I remembered they did and it sucked. So I can't wait for them to make a good film of it <laughs> because it's so exciting, it's so fun. It's set in a dystopian world where everyone basically lives in virtual reality and there the creator dies and leaves his billions to whoever wins this challenge this easter egg hunt race and for years and years no one is finding any clues no one's getting any step closer and then the main character in the book wade unlocks the first of three gates aka the first step towards winning a billion dollar fortune and oh Ooh, it all kicks off and it's so good. It's fast paced, it's brilliant. You really care about everyone that's involved and you love, I think especially because we're in a generation where everything is more and more geared towards online content and online consumption. It's almost like telling the future a little bit if we don't watch our backs. Um, even down to the fact that they talk so aggressively about the climate crisis and how we did nothing to stop it and it annihilated cities. I just think it's so good. Oh my god. It made me so happy. And this was the book that I classed as my number one, which was a book that makes you happy. The second challenge, depending on what order you go in, I guess this is technically the first challenge for a book, was a book with a house on the front. And I chose, I scoured my shelves, and the first one that came to mind was Station Eleven, because that has like tents on the front of it, which is technically a house. And then I also kind of thought maybe Ready Player One would count, because they live in all of these, um, in the, they're called the stacks, it's just caravans on top of caravans, but I didn't want to be too cheeky with it. So I chose Remains of the Day by Kazu Ishiguro. I love Never Let Me Go, that's another book that normally lives on my favourite books ever shelf and is currently lent out to friends. 
I think it's so wonderful. And so I wanted for ages to read something else by Kazuo Ishiguro. I had this on my shelf, as I say, it has a house on, so this just seemed to kind of, it was, it was gonna be read at some point this year. It's just maybe been brought ahead of schedule, but it's really well written. It's just a bit slower in um, the pace a little bit. It's set in 1950s England, where a butler who has worked in a house, in a manor house since the 20s, he drives across the country to go and uh, meet up with an old member of staff who he may or may not secretly be madly in love with. I don't know, I haven't got that far in the book, but it starts off with them really despising each other. So I'm like, I see you. I see you, Stevens. I see what's going on here. And it's kind of reflecting on his life. It talks about class and what it means to be a good butler, which you can also kind of carry through to what it means to be good at your job, what it means to be good in the service industry and stuff like that. Um, I just think it's really pretty so far. It's really well written. And I'm really enjoying it. As I say, I'm like halfway through, so we'll see how it goes. If it ends badly, I'll be really confused. And then the other criteria for one of the books was pick a book that of a place that you want to go. And again, I chose a reread for this, which is a little bit naughty, a little bit cheeky, but it's a reread I wanted to do in 2020. So it, I, I've just kind of shuffled it further forward in the reading list maybe. And that is Nakano Thrift Shop by Hiromi Kawakami. I love this. This was the first Kawakami book I read and I then proceeded to buy every other book she read because I really enjoy her writing style. Um, and I love Japan. I have been twice and the, when I was looking through my shelves, because I have quite a lot of translated fiction, so I have quite a lot that are set in different countries and I could choose from quite a wide range, there was as soon as I saw it, I was like, yes, to be walking around the streets of Tokyo again, it would just be so magical. I, I've said, when all of this is done, um, I'm going to be hopping on a plane, flying out there for, with a one-way ticket, and you will not see me again for a very long time. And then the final challenge is to read a book entirely in the same room. As I say, primarily, I've been reading in here anyway, because this has been my main space but so far I've read all of what I've read in here in here I've been sat just over there just off camera um so I reckon this will be read in here this was a tag that was created for the reading rush hashtag as I say I've now made an Instagram account dedicated just to book content I've been posting some of the photo challenges and stuff which has been cool it's been nice to have like a project to do for a couple of days and have a sense of purpose so if you fancy having a look at any of that feel free to do that thank you so much for watching i am hopefully gonna have a charger so i'll be using slightly better camera stuff next time and then we'll practice a whole new editing skill set um thank you so much for watching like and subscribe don't do that if you don't want to don't have to i'm not making money off this so who cares <laughs> Uh, stay home, stay safe, and goodbye. Bye!